man, you, you take compliments as something bad. I think that's, oh yeah, I gotta turn, off the, turn on the mic. Don't forget to turn on the ads on. All right, um, so I have cosine of x divided by two equals square root of two over two. Now the main important thing that I told you about this one is I want you to find all of the solutions, not just the solutions between zero and two pi. However, to get started, the first thing we want to do is find the solutions on 0 to 2 pi, because that's kind of our easiest way for us to be able to understand all of our solutions. 0 and 2 pi is on our unit circle, which we're a little bit familiar with on when our cosine of x, uh, cosine or of our angle, which is x divided by 2, is equal to square root of 2 over 2. So we go and take a look at this, and we say, well, we know we're aware of two angles, where our cosine of x, our x coordinate of an angle or a point on the unit circle, is going to equal the square root of 2 over 2. Right? Everybody follows? So this first angle is pi over 4. And the next angle is going to be uh, 7, pi. 7 pi over 4. So you could write your answer. What we did before was we wrote x equals pi over 4 and x equals um, 7 pi over 4. Now, the difference is we're not solving for our variable. Our angle that we're taking the angle is not just x, x, it's now x divided by 2. And the other issue, though, is we're not just finding the angles that are on the unit circle. That's the interval between 0 and 2 pi. I want to find all of the solutions. So, to help you kind of visualize what that looks like, let's go back and draw the cosine graph again. So if I was going to draw the cosine graph, we know it goes up to 1, down to negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. OK, 1, 2, 3. Um, let's actually, let's make this a little bit smaller. OK, so we know the cosine graph goes at 1, comes down, minimum, comes up, there. So the distance from here to here is 2 pi, right? Does everybody see this? This is represented right up here. We learned how to graph it like this by using the points on the unit circle, because this is an interval of angles between 0 and 2 pi. So here is what it's going to look like when we graph it on an x and y axis. Now, we understood, though, that the cosine graph is not just, or sorry, the um, our trigonometric functions are not just limited to one revolution, right? We have infinite many revolutions that we can go on. So this graph is going to continue in the positive and negative direction. Um, now, we're looking at our answer of when of x equals the square root of 2 over 2. Now, if you kind of look at the decimal version of that, it's going to be less than, or I'm sorry, yeah, the positive. It's going to be less than uh, 1, but greater than 0. And I don't know, let's just pretend the answer's somewhere right around there, all right? So you can see on the interval of 0 and 2 pi, we have one answer. Because if here is pi, here's pi halves, well then that would be pi fourths. And then our other answer, which would be like right around there, which ends up being if this is 3 pi over 2, because this is 2 pi, then that looks like 7 pi, um, 7 pi over 4. All right? So you guys can see there's two solutions on our graph, right? But notice, ladies and gentlemen, this graph continues. Right? And guess what? There's going to always be this answer on this when our x is equal to square root of 2 over 2. There's a solution here, solution here, solution here, solution here. And it's going to keep on continuing, right? There's not just our two solutions on the interval of 0 and 2 pi. There's infinite many solutions. So how do I represent all of my solutions? Well, I have this solution. To get to the next solution, I have to add what? 2 pi. Here to here. 2 pi. Here to here. I have to add 2 pi. And how many times can I keep on adding or subtracting 2 pi to always get my solutions? Infinite many times. So that's why we're going to write pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Then the same thing for 7 pi over 4. To go to 7 pi over 4, to get to the next solution, um, hmm? yeah, I'm going to do that next. So um, 
2 pi n. And look at my graph. It looks like it's a little, little rough on its edges. But you can see that the each distance for this one to get to the other solution is also going to be keep on adding 2 pi. So you're going to add 2 pi n. Then our last final stage is hopefully you guys can see why I keep on adding 2 pi to get to my next solution. Um, the other thing you guys can see is if I get here's my one answer. To get to my next angle, I have to go all the way back around again to find a coterminal angle, which again is adding 2 pi. And I can continually do, do this infinite many times. So we're going to keep on adding 2 pi n because we're trying to find all the solutions. Then our last final step is now we need to make sure we solve for x. So to solve for x, I need to multiply by 2 on both sides. You got to follow your inverse operations. So, there, so I, therefore, I can say x equals 2 times pi over 4 is going to be pi halves plus 4 pi n. And then x equals um, 7 halves plus 4 pi n. Okay. And there you go.